Hello and welcome dear friends and subscribers of Cricket Happenings to a Boxing Day broadcast here on this show today and we are looking at three test matches one test match right now the first day's play is right underway we have around 5 16 overs uh, still to go in the match between South Africa and Sri Lanka where today is the first day's play so around 17 overs left where I have to say that uh, right now as I am giving you the cricket update here uh, it's South Africa uh, after winning the toss and electing to bat uh, on a pitch at Port Elizabeth uh, are find themselves at 215 for 4 uh, while I am talking to you Duplessis uh, the captain is not out on 21 with 3 boundaries and Temba Bauma has just taken his place as while I, while, while I just started this cricket show uh, I have we have a dismissal here as uh, Dumini uh, who was looking pretty good with a very very uh, strokeful knock uh, has been dismissed uh, it was a wonderful knock from Dumini it is good to see uh, Dumini really hitting his straps there as uh, Dumini contributed 63 with 10 well 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 hit boundaries uh, through the offside uh, so that's the match situation here so we still have so I'll be there to give you some cricket updates uh, and I will also tell you what exactly is happening so I'm speaking to you 16 hours still to go uh, to end the day here on the first day of the test series between South Africa and Sri Lanka at Port Elizabeth uh, Sri Lanka Lakmal the bowler has been doing a beautiful job as getting the ball to swerve away and swerve in and he has already picked up three wickets we'll come back to that later uh, as far as two Boxing Day test matches, sorry, the, as far as the Boxing Day uh, matches go, uh, we had the first ODI of the series which was played between New Zealand and Bangladesh and uh, New Zealand uh, definitely putting up a very big score on the board of 341. Uh, well, it was well challenged by the uh, Bangladeshi uh, players, the batsmen, uh, but New Zealand were too strong for it as New Zealand won the match by 77 runs the feature being Tom Latham um, playing in innings which uh, normally if you see uh, Tom Latham normally holds up the innings but yesterday if you look at his knock uh, it was a bit in contrast to what Tom Latham does Tom Latham as you would remember in India uh, he really held up the innings and he played throughout the till the last player and here too he did a fine job in fact uh, we saw that there was a bit of uh, some aggression coming in from Tom Latham as he's contributed 137 of 121 deliveries with seven fours and four sixes uh, and, and that enabled New Zealand to put up 341. Also Colin Munro contributed in a hard hitting manner. Uh, Bangladesh, uh, well, uh, they were all out for 264. Uh, uh, there were contributions but not any major contributions. Nobody, was go uh, nobody could do what Latham could do. Uh, as to go and score a century and that ended in New Zealand actually winning the first match of the one day series and leading the ODI series 1-0 this is a three match series as you all know and as far as the, the traditional boxing day test match of the Melbourne cricket ground uh, where Pakistan were taking on the Aussies and it was uh, the Pakistan actually getting the rub of the coin there uh, the captain uh, Ms. Baul Haq uh, getting the rub of the coin uh, and he was the one uh, who actually uh, they were the ones who actually uh, won the toss uh, and Pakistan uh, were uh, uh, I mean uh, definitely uh, the boxing day uh, my test match was a bit of a damper uh, to all the Aussie fans here because of some rain coming in uh, and bringing a premature end to play here uh, at the Melbourne cricket ground which was very sad uh, it was not a good beginning as far as the uh, boxing day test match was concerned as uh, Australia um, I had taken four Pakistan wickets for 142 uh, and Australia definitely taking the honours there uh, at stumps on day one which I'll be coming back to it but definitely I'll be starting off with the uh, first ODI uh, between New Zealand uh, and um, Bangladesh which was the first ODI uh, one day international match of the series uh, the toss was actually won by New Zealand and uh, New Zealand on a very slow wicket decided that they will bat first uh, if you look at the card since there are going to be three things that I need to cover so I'm not going to go into any uh, real nitty gritties about it uh, it's all going to be a sort of a match summary so New Zealand actually started off so New Zealand and uh, Bangladesh uh, with New Zealand actually winning the toss 
uh, and uh, New Zealand electing to bat first. Well, uh, all eyes were on, Mashraf, uh, on Mustafa Zul Rahman because he had made a comeback. Uh, well, he definitely did a good job. In fact, <coughs> um, we saw that he was the one uh, who actually provided them the breakthrough uh, with a ball that he actually held back uh, to Martin Guptil. Martin Guptil uh, was looking uh, pretty good uh, with his uh, big hitting that he's known for as he contributed a very quick 15 uh, of uh, 19 deliveries with 1-4 and 1-6. Uh, and uh, definitely, uh, the, 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 uh, one could say that uh, the, uh, the, the square, as far as the boundaries was concerned, uh, was very short and uh, you could hit a lot of sixes too. The ball used to really carry, the wind used to really carry the ball into the stands. And Martin Guptil uh, made uh, 15 uh, before, as I said, Mustafa Dharaman holding uh, his line back and Soumya Sarkar picking up the catch and Martin Guptil went for a big shot. At uh, the bowling of Mustafa Rahman and Rahman actually getting the first scalp and also providing uh, the New Zealand the much needed uh, Pakistan the sorry the Bangladesh the much needed breakthrough. Uh, Latham uh, was joined in by William Sumrit. Latham was uh, looking very good. I mean he was not the one uh, who was uh, really really pottering around as he normally does in one day internationals. Uh, we definitely saw a different uh, a style of play from Latham here uh, where he decided. Uh, that uh, he's not the one to really stay there uh, but uh, really keep the scoreboard busy uh, with ticking up the runs. That's what precisely did. And also we saw a rare bit of aggression coming in from Tom Latham as uh, not only hit a lot of boundaries, he also hit uh, four sixes as well. And Latham was doing a fine job uh, and um, uh, Kane Williamson uh, looked good in his uh, knock of 31 uh, with five boundaries of 36 deliveries uh, but then task in Hammond uh, got us. Um, I mean, uh, this this was something that Kane Williamson normally is very very good uh, on the on the cut shot uh, on on the cut uh, through the point region. Uh, but in this case, uh, Task and Hammond won the battle as he got the ball to probably uh, bounce a bit more than probably Williamson expected, uh, and the ball actually um, um, stuck the uh, hit the leather of the bat and was Mushfiqur Rahim behind the stumps, making no mistake. So Williamson was gone for 31 of 30 deliveries with five fours. It made the score 79 for two. Neil Broom was making a comeback into the New Zealand cricket team after a gap of six years as he joined uh, Tom Latham, uh, who was uh, pretty well, um, uh, pretty, pretty good at the crease. Uh, Neil Broom, well, uh, he could not hit any boundary, um, and that was the time uh, the uh, the Mushraf and Murtaza, the Bangladeshi skipper, uh, decided that he will bring his spinners on. And he decided to press uh, the very experienced spinner uh, Shakib Al Hassan into action, and Shakib Al Hassan did not disappoint as uh, he really uh, got uh, the New Zealand innings uh, into a real bind uh, when he picked up uh, two wickets. First, he picked up the wicket of Neil Broom by getting him LBW with a ball that turned in. He was gone for 22 of 32 deliveries, and James Neesham uh, was capped uh, pretty early as uh, James Neesham was also out LBW to Shakib Al Hassan for 12 which made the score 158 for 4 uh, in, the 28th, in the 29th over, uh, which said that uh, Bangladesh uh, had really taken the initiative there and uh, really had this news and innings uh, in a bit of a bind, one could say. As uh, Colin Munro uh, came in and joined Latham at the crease. And uh, this was the one that uh, New Zealand definitely needed, if at all they were to really put up a big score on the board. And that happened precisely uh, due to the efforts of Tom Latham at one end and Colin Munro at one end. Colin Munro, as you know, uh, he's a player who doesn't like to be just staying there, but he really likes to throw the bat at the ball. And that's what he precisely did as Munro started uh, smacking sixes and fours as well and the innings uh, got some real impetus as uh, the New Zealand innings started racing along like a tracer bullet, one could say. Uh, as it was a very, very big partnership. Uh, in fact, um, it was a wonderful partnership uh, which added 150 yard runs uh, for the fifth wicket as uh, Munro slammed 87 of just 61 deliveries with eight fours and four sixes. Uh, and Munro was gone, but New Zealand uh, were given, uh, as I said, uh, the, the, the main impetus was given by this partnership between uh, Tom Latham uh, and uh, and Colin Munro, 87 of 61 balls, 8 fours and 4 sixes, 
and after that uh, Ronke was out for five was castled by Taskin Hammett for five uh, and then finally uh, Latham uh, left the scene but not before contributing uh, 137 of just 121 balls with seven fours and four sixes and as I said we definitely saw a different style of play from Tom Latham which was pretty good to see. Santon was not out on 8 of 7 deliveries, Saudi was not out on uh, on 7 of 5 deliveries, 1 4 as New Zealand innings, uh, um, uh, New Zealand uh, posted 341 for 7 of their 50 overs. Uh, the bowling of Mutaza, um, 10 over 61 was not looking good at all you could not make any impression i would say most of the rayman 10 hours no made in 262 did his bit tuscan ahmed uh, looked good in patches one could say nine hours no made in two for 70. shakib hassan uh, was the pick of the ballers three for 69 of his 10. samia sarkar bowled four hours for 25. still hunting for his uh, first one day international wicket samia sarkar uh Mossadak hussein uh, with his off spin uh, was a bit uh, a bit costly his seven overs uh, costing 40 runs uh, as far as the Bangladesh were concerned, they were set a, they were set a target of 342 to win the match uh, with a uh, run right uh, 6.882 runs per over uh, to be uh, uh, to be had. And Bangladesh uh, definitely uh, the start was um, uh, good with Imrul Kays actually uh, hitting um, Tim Saudi uh, for uh, sixes and boundaries, uh, but uh, but then uh, it was uh, Saudi who actually had the last laugh as uh, he picked up the wicket of of uh, Imrul Kays uh, by uh, forcing Imrul Kays uh, into one more hook shot and this time Luke Ronke behind the stumps uh, picked it up and he was gone for 16 of 21 deliveries, 2 fours and 1 6. Uh, Soumya Sarkar um, um, tried to chip a ball uh, from Nisham um, through the through the 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 short side uh, and Soumya Sarkar was claimed as he was trying to hit over the top one could say he was gone for 1 and Mahmudullah uh, was uh, dismissed for not. Mahmudullah didn't have a very good match at all. Uh, he dropped a catch in the fence too and Mahmudullah's contribution was duck as he was claimed by the wicket of Nisham. After that, Tami Mikbal and Shakibul Hassan had, uh, were the ones who were trying to repair the damage uh, with the Bangladesh innings uh, at 48 for 3 in the 12th over. Shakibul Hassan uh, was uh, given, uh, peppered a bit with some short stuff but uh, he took the challenge head on uh, and started hitting uh, sixes and boundaries which is good to see. Uh, as experience was really telling uh, the story there. But then uh, it was very difficult. Uh, New Zealand bowlers were bowling good lines to make uh, things very difficult. As Tommy McBall, uh, after making 38 or 59 balls with five fours, was a goner uh, to the bowling of Nisham. Uh, and then we saw Mushfiqur Rahim come in uh, and was an able companion uh, to Shakib Al Hassan as uh, they took the scoring along uh, in a very nice manner. Uh, Mushfiqur Rahim was go doing well. And that was the time Shakib Lassan, after contributing 59 of 54 balls, 5 fours and 2 sixes departed. Uh, and Sabi Rahman contributed 16. But the big blow, according to me, for Bangladesh in their chase, because they definitely had Masarak Hussain, uh, who really shown uh, that he could be a good talent uh, coming lower down the order. And that's, uh, uh, that's, uh, that's a good thing for Bangladesh, I would say, because Masarak Hussain tonked uh, uh, unbeaten 50 of 44 deliveries with 5 fours and 3 sixes in the chase. Uh, but uh, they lost Mushfiqur Rahim due to a hamstring injury and probably one would have thought that if Mushfiqur Rahim uh, was fully fit uh, and he didn't have that injury uh, probably Mushfiqur Rahim would have taken this uh, innings to a real distance uh, and would have really really challenged this uh, New Zealand uh, innings because we know Mushfiqur Rahim was looking pretty good in fact uh, over the partnership uh, which is going on he had scored the majority of runs uh, and what a sad thing for Bangladesh uh, that Mushfiqur Rahim had to retire herd on 42 or 48 deliveries uh, with three fours. Uh, Musadek Hussain definitely has shown uh, that there is some talent coming in in this Bangladesh ranks with this unbeaten uh, 50 of just 44 deliveries with five fours. Uh, with, sorry, with five fours and three sixes. Murtaza was out for 14, Hamid for two, and that was it for the Bangladesh. Bangladesh finishing on 264 all out. Uh, thus, uh, uh, the, the, the Kiwi is actually winning the uh, first exchange with Bangladesh here. Uh, of the ODI series uh, by a margin of uh, 77 runs. As far as the bowling uh, bowling went, uh, uh, the it was uh, Trent Bolt nine was none for 43. Uh, Saudi did a good job 9.52632. Ferguson nine was three for 54. 
Um, also bowled well. Nisham, 7 overs, 1 minute, 3 for 36 was the pick of the bowlers. Santner, 10 overs, 1 for 61. Was a bit costly, one thought, uh, by Mitchell Santner's standards. And um, and over the, and, and then we get on to the other match here uh, between Pakistan and Australia. Stumps and Dave, as I said, rain, bringing a premature close. Uh, Pakistan actually winning the toss at the uh, Boxing Day. There was a huge crowd assembled, but I, I, I would say the Boxing Day was an absolute disappointment. Uh, for this uh, particular uh, Boxing Day crowd here at the Melbourne Cricket Ground, as um, it was, um, it was Aust Pakistan winning the toss uh, and actually electing to bat first. Uh, well, there was um, definitely some moment for the bowlers. There's no doubt about it. But Sami Aslam was grinding it out there uh, like a grinder, and Azhar Ali uh, at the other end was also doing the same. But the pace attack, as far as Mitchell Stark, um, also got his uh, wish fulfilled of playing in his first Boxing Day Test match. Uh, and Josh Hazelwood at the other end was absolutely on the money and then uh, it took Nathan Lyon, the Rana Moss spinner, to be pressed into action and Nathan Lyon was the one who provided them the breakthrough when Sami Aslam was caught by Smith after making 9 of 41 deliveries with one boundary. Uh, Barber Azam looked brief, uh, briefly good in his uh, knock of 23 when he was uh, using his uh, feet beautifully to the spinners, 23 with 3 boundaries before Hazelwood claimed his wicket, uh, well caught by Smith in the slip cordon. Um, Yunis Khan came in um, and joined Azhar Ali. Azhar Ali was doing what he is good at and that is to um, you know, basically um, offer a, a very good defense and also uh, trying to hit only the loose balls. Uh, but Jackson Bird uh, was the best bowler yesterday. Uh, what a splendid uh, spell of bowling. I mean he did everything, got the ball to move, uh, bowled the right line and length and Yunis Khan uh, trying to, uh, got, uh, got a ball from Bird which was angling into him and Yunis Khan uh, was a goner as the ball snaked between the bat and pad to knock off his stumps. He was gone for 21 with one boundary and then a big wicket of Miss Baal Haq, an identical delivery from Bird but a different result one could say but what a brilliant catch by uh, Nick Madison uh, at the forward short leg region uh, to pull off a beautiful catch just inches off the turf and Nick Madison definitely would have been very happy and now he would, he would hope uh, that this fielding uh, this piece of fielding that he did really drops on to his batting and he scores a lot of runs against Pakistan. So Ms. Baalak was gone and that uh, really left uh, Pakistan uh, in a real spot of bother at 125 for 4. But Azhar Ali was there when rain came. He was not out on 66 for 4 boundaries. Asad Shafiq was not out on 4. 142 for, for 4 uh, as stumps on day 1. Uh, that is what Pakistan ended up with. Uh, Stark, as you said, two wickets to Bird. Bird is the best of the bowlers. 253, one wicket apiece to Hazelwood and Nathan Lyon. Now I'll take you down live to the uh, match between South Africa and um, Sri Lanka. This is the first day of the uh, first test match and uh, definitely it's going, only going to be a cricket update. As I'm talking to you, uh, Tenda Bahuma has been dismissed. So Bahuma has gone. South Africa, 228 for five. As I'm talking to you, we have another 13.4 overs uh, still left for the day to end here. Uh, at uh, Port Elizabeth as South Africa's score reached 228 for 5. They won the toss and elected to bat first. So let's have a look at the scoreboard here as far as South Africa are concerned. Uh, South Africa winning the toss and elected to bat uh, and South Africa as I said right now as I'm talking to you they're 228 for 5 uh, on a pitch definitely had a tinge of green uh, but I thought um, it was Cook and Elgar really doing a very good job. Cook in fact was looking uh, very good um, uh, with his uh, stroke making as he made 59 collecting a lot of uh, runs through the onside with his uh, flicks and glances but then Suranga Lakmal was the one who picked up his wicket uh, by angling in a delivery caught Chandi Malbo Lakmal for 59 with seven boundaries uh, they had a very good partnership they put up a century partnership of 104 runs uh, for the first wicket Elgar uh, looked a bit sedate in his knock of 45 with five boundaries. He was also out in uh, identical circumstances. Caught Chandi Malbo Lakmal for 45. Hashim Imamla once again struggled against the... Um, uh, well, he definitely used to play his uh, sweet drives and uh, a lot of punches. But uh, unfortunately for Hamla, everything was going straight to the fielders. But Amla finally was dismissed. Caught Chandi Malbo Lakmal for 20 with two boundaries. After that, Dumini played a strokeful innings of 63 uh, and Bauma, uh, was, uh, uh, Bauma's wicket has been claimed by Rangana Herod for 3. Uh, Duplessis right now when I'm talking to you is not out on 27. Decock is not out on 2 and the best bowling happens to be from Suranga Lakmal 
who has been uh, bowling beautifully, has been taking full advantage of the uh, conditions on the pitch here in Port Elizabeth, where he has got the ball to move away. He has been bringing the ball, uh, uh, swerving the ball away from the right-hander, but also bringing the ball into the left-hander. Look at his bowling figures, 18 overs, 5 maidens, 41 runs and 3 wickets in his back. Rangana had it at 17.2 overs. And while I'm talking to you, I'm trying to see whether there's any wicket. No, Rangana had it as 2 wickets for 47. Uh, I don't have much time to really dwell on, dear fans, as I'm leaving you with this live cricket update here. Uh, from uh, Port Elizabeth here in South Africa, where South Africa at uh, 228 for five, uh, and there, there are still, uh, to, to, to me, uh, with 90 overs still to be bowled for the day, uh, we are still looking at another 14 overs still to come. Well, dear fans, subscribers, unfortunately, uh, due to paucity of time, uh, it's about time for me to sign off on this cricket show, but promising you that tomorrow I'll be back uh, with the second day's proceedings uh, in, in both these Boxing Day test matches. Till such time, uh, uh, host Ram comes back. Uh, 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 this is a goodbye from host Ram Studios. Thank you.